Hey guys, welcome to episode three in my series on the drugstore where I go out and I test as many products as I can. I have been trying out a bunch of brand new makeup at the drugstore, but I've also been trying a lot of new to me drugstore makeup. So this might be makeup that's been out for a couple of years and I've just not got around to trying it. I have some really amazing products to show you today and some that you can probably skip on. So, should we just get into it? So we're going to kick off with a new complexion product, which is from Catrice. And this is the Soft Glam Filter Fluid. I think we all know that this is supposed to be a dupe for the very famous Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Elf have a really amazing dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. And I love this kind of product. As you might know, I love to have a really glowy complexion. This product can be used on its own. So just to give your skin that your skin but better day. It can be used as a primer. It can be used under your makeup makeup just to elevate your makeup. You could also use it as a liquid highlighter. So this only comes in three shades. It has a real filtering effect to the skin. It blends really, really nicely. It doesn't have any glittery particles in there. It, I wouldn't say it's very shiny. However, I as with any of these filters, I always do avoid my problematic areas, specifically my nose and my chin. Nothing, in my opinion, is going to fully dupe the Charlotte Tilbury. I'm just gonna be real with you. But I think Elf did a really good job. I'm gonna tell you that I think Catrice have done a better job. So this is the Catrice, and I actually feel like the undertones in the Catrice are much better than the e.l.f. This is in the shade light to medium. But if I show you the e.l.f. light to medium also, very yellow, orangey undertone. And although I still really like this product, the shades are a little bit off for me. So having a more of a neutral based shade has been a win for me. Now, as with all drugstore products, they vary wildly in price from place to place. So I'm not going to focus too much on the price. We'll just talk in general terms. But I know that I picked up the Elf for about, I think it was about 15 euros. The Catrice actually cost me 7.99. So if you were looking to invest in one of these and you don't know whether to get the Catrice or whether to get the Elf, I'm gonna say go for the Catrice. The shades are much better. You get more coverage with this. I've been really, really enjoying it. So yes, that's a definite win from Catrice. Sticking with Catrice, I know everybody's talking about the new tinted serum foundation, but I've actually gone back to one of their other foundations that I had never tried. And this is so, so good. This is the Catrice True Skin Foundation. I got this for under seven pounds. I think it was 6.95. I have this in the shade Neutral Sand. This claims to be the ultimate caring foundation for a natural and simultaneously even complexion. The long lasting makeup provides medium to high coverage to gently conceal imperfections and redness, leaving a feathery light texture and an incomparable matte real skin finish. This is very quickly becoming one of my all time favorite foundations. I didn't think I'd like the finish. I like a really glowy foundation and I thought this was just going to give me a really matte finish. Obviously, this is what I'm wearing today. I'd say in regards to the finish, it gives me in between a soft matte and a satin finish, which I wouldn't normally love, but oh my goodness, I love this foundation. First of all, the colour match is so good, which I don't normally find at the drugstore. It blurs my imperfections. It gives me a good, solid, medium definitely to full coverage and say I only need really half a pump to cover my whole face. It blends out really nicely, it evens my skin tone and it still allows my skin to shine through. It's not heavy, it's not cakey and fun fact I saw here that it's actually made in Italy. And I think you can tell this is a very high quality product from Catrice. And for those that are interested, it is silicone based. I know some people always prefer water-based foundations. If you have more mature skin, but you're looking for a little bit of higher coverage, it's an absolutely incredible foundation. And 
one I've been reaching for over many of my high-end foundations. Uh, next up, we have a new brow product from Maybelline, and this is the Maybelline Builder Brow. I consider myself to be a little bit of an expert on brow pens. I love them, but it's very, very hard to find a really good one. My favorite is the Glossier Brow Flick, but this is an excellent, excellent brow pen. So on one end, you have it's like a little felt tip, but it's very, very fine. I don't know if you can see those little fine strokes there on my hand. In relation to the drugstore though, I think this is a great product, which is the NYX Lift and Snatch. The one thing that really puts me off this is the fact that it leaks everywhere. And it doesn't matter how many times I've bought this, it leaks. This is actually a much better brow pen than the NYX, and I'm gonna tell you why. So first of all, it's not as pigmented. So because it's not as pigmented, you can build up those hair strokes and you can achieve a much more natural looking brow than you would achieve with the NYX. Now I will say that the pigment isn't huge, so you do have to work a little bit harder to get that fuller looking brow, and for someone like me, I don't have any brows, I have no brows, but this is what I've used on my brows today, and I think it's done a really, really nice job at just giving me a natural looking brow. This is in the shade black brown. And once you've done the little hair strokes, you then are supposed to go in with a gel at the end. So on the other end, it's got this, look at that. Isn't that the teeny tiniest little spoolie ever? And then you go in with the gel afterwards. I'm gonna be honest, I don't love the gel. I'm not gonna be using the gel part. Although I love the size of the spoolie and I think it's great. I don't like the gel formula. It, I don't know if you can see, but my eyebrows look really, really shiny. So although it does actually hold the brow hair, I just find that my eyebrows get a little bit too shiny and they just feel a little bit too hard. So yeah, I will be sticking with my e.l.f. brow lift because that's my favorite brow product for keeping the brows in place. I could do without the gel. I don't love it but the actual brow pen is very, very good. And it retails for about 13 pounds. If I was to just give you one tip, if you are thinking about picking this up or you have picked this up, is when you are storing it, just store it in with your makeup brushes, but have the tip pointing down because these can dry very quickly. And if you have it like that, all of the product is just lying in the wrong end of the brow pen. But if you have it like this and have it standing like this in your makeup brush pot or wherever, it'll be ready to go. And before you use it, just give it a little shake, which will help the product to loosen up a little bit and be ready for application. But yeah, a really good brow product actually from the drugstore and probably my favorite brow pen from the drugstore. I have been looking for a really good cream bronzer at the drugstore and I've not really found one up until this point. This is the Catrice Melted Sun Cream Bronzer and this is in the shade Beach Babe. This is a very lightweight, but very buildable bronzer. It feels different to other cream bronzers that I have. It has the feeling of a liquid bronzer, but it blends like a cream bronzer. I really like the color of this bronzer because it's very neutral, so I can use it as a bronzer and a contour in one. You can definitely build up this formula, that is for sure. So you can go for a more of a sheer look, or you can build it up to the coverage that you desire. So yeah, I've been really enjoying this bronzer and this was five pounds. So if you're looking for a really good cream bronzer from the drugstore, you can't go wrong with this one from Catrice. And this is going to last me for absolutely ages. Really, really great. So I've been testing a couple of new blushes from the drugstore. And this first one is the Maybelline Sun Kisser Blush. And this can be a little bit confusing on the shelf because it has the exact same packaging as the lip gloss. So be careful, make sure you know which one you are getting. This is definitely available in parts of Europe, but I don't think it's available in America until the 1st of May, as far as I have read. I couldn't have been any more excited when I saw that they were bringing out a liquid blush. So I think these are actually designed to be used as a blush and a bronzer in one, which is a really clever idea. So I picked up City Sizzle, which is a nice kind of bronzy shade. You can see it there on the back of my hand. Absolutely gorgeous shade. Honestly, I cannot speak more highly of the shade. 
However, if you have a look at when I'm applying this, the worst thing you can do with this blush is dot it onto your cheeks. Even though in the instructions it will say dot dot blend. Don't dot dot blend because if you dot dot and blend, it dries literally within seconds and it is very hard to blend out. So my advice with this blush is to pop it onto your hand first and then pop it onto your cheeks. And the second piece of advice is work quickly. You have to be rapid when it comes to this blush because it can be very patchy. The problem that I see with this blush is it's very sheer. So it has to be built up. You have to build this blush up. If you are not rapid in your application, it's going to be patchy and it's going to be really hard to blend out. I don't know if this will pick up, but it is... It's, it's glittery. It has glitter in there. If you are put off by glittering products, you're gonna to wanna to give this a miss. If you are going to be spending your hard earned money on this, and this costs about 10 pounds, it's a lot of money to be spending on a product that you know you can't use really easily. Let's be real, drugstore prices are not very drugstore anymore, are they? Bottom line is, with this Maybelline Sun Kisser blush, you better work fast, otherwise it's gonna end up a patchy mess. The next blush that I've been testing is by Essence and this is the Baby Got Blush and this is in the shade Pink Alicious. It's so, so pretty. Only negative about this blush is it only comes in four shades. It's a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury. You know, they have this, the same um, applicator here. So it's a liquid blush, but I think that this feels super creamy. It's not a glowy blush. It's not a dewy blush. It's not going to leave you with shiny cheeks, but it just dries and sets to a really super natural finish. The pigment from this blush and the coverage from this blush actually blew me away. I was not expecting it at all. Now with this, you can apply it straight to your cheeks. It will give you time to work. It will give you time to blend it out. If you didn't like the Rare Beauty, if you thought they were too pigmented, if you didn't like the e.l.f. because you felt like they were too pigmented, this has the pigment, but there's just something about this formula that doesn't become patchy, it doesn't fade away. If you were to choose between this and the new Maybelline blush, it's no contest. And these are now up there on my rotation with my Rare Beauty blush, with my NARS blush. I really think this is an incredible product. Essence really know how to make a good liquid blush. So moving on to an eyeshadow palette, and this is from NYX. And this is the NYX Ultimate Warm Neutrals palette. I know they've had a similar palette out to this years ago, but they've kind of upgraded it and they've brought out four palettes of the Ultimate Collection. So mine is obviously the very neutral warm one because that's my go-to, but you can get ones that have lots of lovely coloring also. So here is the color story. And honestly, I just wanted a palette from the drugstore that was great for everyday use. And when I did my last video on the drugstore, which was um, my, my mascara test video, I was blown away by the NYX mascara. So I really wanted to try out some of their eyeshadows because I'd never ever used any. And this just this just appealed to me and my boring color story nature. <laughs> I love this because you can go in and you can go in for a standard neutral look, but then you can go in with a neutral leaning cool, or you can go in with a more of a warm toned look. And this palette was 15 pounds, which I think is really good value. I will say that the mattes are super pigmented. The shimmers are very soft. That's the only thing that I was disappointed with with the palette was that I would love a really, just one standout shimmer in this, but that's just a personal thing for me. But for everyday makeup, this has been my go-to palette. There is a little bit of kick up with some of the matte formulas in the pan, but doesn't transfer to the eyes. So if you're looking for something that's really affordable, high quality, pigment in the eyeshadow. They've come out with a really good, versatile, and very, very, very wearable palette. So if you are a little bit boring with your eyeshadow like I am, 
you'll love this. The next product from Essence that I picked up is a new mascara from the brand. This is the Call Me Queen Dramatic False Lash Effect Mascara. I really wanted to love this. I love Essence mascaras. They are one of the best, if not the best, at the drugstore at making mascaras at a super affordable price. So I think this actually cost me about just under five euros. I was really surprised at the wand because it is really, really tiny. And I'm used to Essence ones being quite substantial, quite big. And first things first, it has a very, <laughs> very flimsy plastic wand. I will show you footage now of me applying this. And honestly, it's not difficult to apply. It's quite a wet formula, so that's just something to be aware of. It does feel very wet on the wand but it doesn't actually distribute a ton of product onto the lashes. So it's kind of a happy medium. I was actually surprised at the amount of volume that this mascara gives. And actually, I don't mind the lashes that it gives me. I would have liked a little bit more length, you know, because it is a false lash effect mascara. It gave me quite good volume. However, <laughs> however, I have to say that unfortunately, this mascara flakes like mad on me. So, so I'll include a little bit of footage here just with of my mascara at the end of the day when it has just flaked into bits under my eyes and even during this video I'm actually having to check under my eyes all the time. For me it's not their best. I don't like the flaking and the transferring but it's okay. It's not their best but it's fine. This next product is not new but I didn't even know it existed. I don't know whether I've been living under a rock or what. I don't know where I've been. And this is a concealer from NYX. The NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer. Oh my goodness. Now, I'll just be honest with you. I haven't always loved drugstore concealers. I often find that the shades are really tricky for me and they always lean a little bit too yellow for me. But I, I struck lucky with this shade. This is a really generic shade. It's the shade beige. So I kind of took a stab in the dark, but it worked out well. It's an absolute perfect color match. I don't normally like a full coverage concealer because they are not very hydrating. This definitely is. This is up there with one of the best concealers I've ever, ever tried. So this concealer comes in 13 ultra hydrating shades with a medium coverage, non-cakey finish. It's 100% vegan and it is infused with skin loving ingredients, including tremella mushroom and green tea for up to 24 hours of hydration. This concealer doesn't crease, it doesn't budge, it doesn't cake, it's absolutely fantastic. I think I got this for around about 30, pounds. I have really dark under eyes. I have under eye hollows. I have really thinning under eyes. I think a good concealer can absolutely change your whole face. I know that some people use this as a foundation and I can absolutely see why. It's definitely up there being a medium to full coverage concealer. So you need the absolute tiny, teeniest amount. And I don't usually like pumps like this. What I tend to find usually is you pump out and it just gives you a ton of product that you don't need. But with this one, look, you can just pump out the teeniest little bit. I can't tell you how hydrating this is, but it's hydrating with an amazing amount of coverage. I am blown away by this. So yes, this is an older product. Yes, I am very late to the party, but I'm here. I'm here at the party and I'm having a great time. If you are looking for a drugstore concealer, look no further. This is absolutely head and shoulders above any that I've ever tried. And I'm going to make a really bold statement here. This is one of the best concealers I have ever tried in my life. It's stunning and works amazingly well with powder too. So yeah, incredible find and my new favorite drugstore product. Next up is another older product that I've never tried because it's not actually available in stores over here. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. 
This was actually recommended to me by Cheyenne over at Angelissima ASMR. If you like ASMR, go and check out her channel. I will link it below. Now, I had to pay a bit more for this, so I got this from Amazon. Now, if you're buying this in America, I think it's about seven or eight dollars, but I had to pay 15 pounds sterling for this, but still, it is worth every single penny. I have this in the shade Fair to Light. Cheyenne gave me that recommendation. We have similar skin tones and it works really, really well. This sets my concealer beautifully, but I've also been using it around my nose to conceal my problematic areas. It's not cakey and it's not heavy. It doesn't settle into all of your fine lines. It just sets your makeup really perfectly. And I don't know why they don't have it over here. Why Maybelline? Why is this not available in the shops for us? I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Is there an ingredient in here that you're not allowed to sell in stores over here? My mind is baffled. I much prefer loose powder. Loose powder is my go-to, especially under my eyes. My favorite two are from Huda Beauty and from Givenchy. Very expensive. This one, I don't even know how much it is, 50, 50 something pounds, I think. And this is about 34. So, you know, a lot of money to be spending on loose powder, even though they do last for absolutely ages and they are glorious. And, and this is coming from a powder phobe, someone who doesn't really enjoy using powder, but I love these two and I couldn't recommend them enough. But if you are looking for a cheaper option for one of these powders, this is definitely it. Is it as good as Huda? I think the only thing that makes it not as good for me is the actual shade. So this is the lightest that there is that I can get my hands on and it's a little bit yellow. So I don't really like using yellow powders, but it actually doesn't go on the skin very yellow. So I would say if you are looking for a drugstore powder, a loose powder that is really effective, really good and doesn't cake up, I have been so enjoying this. It is so, so good. I've tried out a few lip products actually from the drugstore and my favorite lip liners at the moment are from e.l.f. And these are the Cream Glide lip liners. Now, I know I have Pinky Promise, and then I have another shade, which is more neutral. Pinky Promise, and I don't know what that big one is, because they don't have the names on the pencils. So they do lose points for not having the names on the pencils, but despite that, these are fantastic little lip pencils, and three pounds, yes, three pounds. They are my go-to lip pencil at the moment. And one thing I can confirm is they are super easy to sharpen. I used to have some really lovely NYX lip liners that I used to love, but could I get them to sharpen? Oh my goodness, trauma. I had to throw them in the bin, but these sharpen really easy. Like they say in the name, very, very creamy, very easy to apply and long lasting love these lip liners and so super affordable. Two lip products I've been absolutely loving. Now the first one is not new. This is the Revlon Colorstay Suede Ink. This is in the shade Gut Instinct. This cost me about 13 euros. First of all, the shade is just everything and it's very true on my lips as well. So it claims to give eight hour wear and it's a no transfer formula with a vivid matte color. It has a smudge proof finish that goes strong for up to eight hours. I don't think I've ever used a lipstick that, that has been as transfer proof as this, but hasn't left my lips dry. It feels really nice on the lips and does not transfer, does not budge, does not smudge. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this is just, it's like a pale peachy pink nude. I love this. Not a new product, but one that you should not sleep on. It's beautiful. Um, I've been trying a new lip product from Essence. And this is the Hydra Kiss Lip Oil. This is one of the most comfortable lip oils I've ever, ever used. I love using it with this lipstick because the lipstick does not transfer underneath. And the shine without being sticky, it just feels so gorgeous. Obviously, with any kind of products like this, I don't care what product you're using, what oil or what gloss you're using, you're going to get a little bit of tackiness. So there's no plumping to this, it's just a basic lip oil, but it just gives you a really hydrated and full looking lip. I've been 
absolutely loving this. I like it so much more than the e.l.f. lip oils. So if you didn't like them, but you're still on the hunt for an affordable lip oil, I think this cost me around four pounds try one of these Hydra Kiss lip oils by Essence. They're absolutely lovely. And just for reference, this is in the shade Kiss from A Rose. So beautiful and so comfortable and really, really flattering on the lips. The last product that I wanted to talk to you about today, this is the new e.l.f. Power Grip Setting Spray. And it's actually a dewy setting spray. Now I have tried dewy setting sprays and they don't always come out very dewy. I picked this up, but I didn't really have too many expectations with it because, you know, setting sprays are setting sprays. They're lovely, but you know, they don't change your life really. So I did do a few tests of this. So I would wear the exact same makeup from one day to the next when I knew I would be doing kind of similar things. And I definitely noticed that my makeup lasted a lot longer with this than it did without. So that's a real plus for me. And I think it really does help to soften up your makeup, especially when I wear a foundation like this, which is more kind of soft matte slash satin. It helps to give that dew and glow back to my skin. And I've been really, really enjoying it. So first thing I would say, you can see there that it has a product that settles at the top and you have to shake this before you spray. So give it a good shake. And if you, I don't know if you'll be able to see this mist, but it is the most fine mist and smells absolutely beautiful too. I didn't actually enjoy the primer, the Power Grip primer. It just, I'm not a big primer fan. So I didn't expect to like this, but I really like it. And there's no stickiness, there's no tackiness. It just sets your makeup really beautifully, gives you a nice dewy finish, and it will definitely help with the longevity of your makeup. It's a really, really good product and it retails for about 10 pounds. Okay, I think that's it. You know, I've definitely missed products, <laughs> but I don't want this video to be too long, but I will be producing more videos like this where I test, you know, both old and new drugstore products. I think it's really important not to get blindsided by just new products, which I do quite often. Let's not forget the ones that are already there in the stores that have been sat there for ages and everybody's forgotten about them because we're all getting our heads turned. I will definitely be dipping back into some original older products and testing them out and seeing what is good. Do let me know down in the comments what drugstore products you have tried recently, what's been good, what have you loved and what have you not loved. If you found this video helpful in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel or giving the video a like. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next video, but until then, take care and bye for now.